glad you're here. Hope you have a blessed day. Um, don't forget to fill out your yellow cards, those of you who are perhaps here for the first time. We keep, our, uh, keep track of our uh, attendance with those, and also there is a space on that card for prayer requests. We use those for Wednesday evenings, inviting you also to come to our prayer meetings. Uh, they're 6 o'clock Wednesday evening. We always have a good time in the Lord as we seek his face on certain issues. The trustees are making an audit of all the church keys. If you have a church key, there should be a number on it. I invite you to call Tina at our church office and let her know that you have a key. If you think you need a key, we have some. I uh, again ask you to call uh, Tina at the church office and let her know why you think you need a key and then we'll see what we can do about getting you one. Reminding you that the uh, children's activity bags are back there on that uh, coat tree. If you'd like to take one, feel free. We'd love you to do that. Um, use up whatever's in there, but if there's anything left over, um, if there isn't, just leave the empty bag on the chair. But if there's things left over, leave it all on the, on the pew, and our ladies will take care of cleaning it up for you for the next Sunday. We're collecting items for uh, River's Edge Community Service. Um, you'll see a blue box back there on the table with a poster on, uh, affixed to it. I believe we're uh, collecting two-inch binders, earbuds, erasers, and 24-count color uh, box of crayons. Um, if you are able, we invite you to bring some of that stuff into church, put them in the box. We use them for our uh, school students in our uh, school district. Um, I continue to be shocked uh, hearing that kids go without however uh, they do, and instead of complaining about it, let's do something about it. And so if you're able, uh, to stop by and look at that poster, see what you can give and bring it in. We'd appreciate it very, very much. Youth Fellowship will meet this evening at 6 p.m. and we're meeting here, correct? Somebody help me out. Y yes, thank you, thank you. We're uh, winding down our study of Romans. Um, tonight is going to be a review and um, more than that is going to be an invitation to respond to what the Apostle Paul wrote there. So hope that you can come tonight, 6 p.m. here at the church. United Women of Faith will be meeting on Tuesday, June 20th at 7 p.m. A couple of my friends are going to be bringing the message. Uh, they are both Native American women, very active in Native American causes, and they're going to come and speak to us uh, about those. They are great speakers, great ladies, hilarious, we love them, and I'm sure that you will love them as well. Our Bible study will be on Tuesday, June 27th at 7 p.m., and we're looking at uh, United Methodist uh, doctrines and beliefs, um, going through the scriptures to see how those fit and, and, and what uh, we um, stand for as United Methodists. Uh, our daily bread will be on Friday, June 30th at 10 a.m. And, and as we get close, well, I see there's some back there. Cool. Are there uh, copies of the recipe back there? Thank you. Yeah, but if you don't, if you don't get a recipe, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I believe you're making chicken casserole, chicken noodle casserole. Good. You don't want me to cook it, so I won't. But those of you who can, feel free. Are there any other announcements that need to be mentioned this morning? I did not. So go ahead.
Thank you. For those of you who are watching us at home, if you are able to uh, make brownies, bring them in and, and we'll use them for the youth work camp. Thank you, Lindy. And understand, whether you're here or at home, we're not asking you to make 300 each. Okay? We need 300 total. And those that are left over, Lindy's going to take home and feed the Brian. Yes. Anyone else this morning? Let's prepare for worship as we listen to the ministry of the opening voluntary. One of these days, we're going to have to have her give us a concert. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Would you stand for the call to worship? The words are printed on the screen before you. What shall we return to you, O God, for all of your bounty to us? O Lord, I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. Let us worship God by turning to number 57. 57. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, the words are also on the screen before you.
us pray. Gracious God, you shelter your people in the midst of their distress. You provide them a haven of security and rest. You bring comfort to those with affliction and hear the pleas of the persecuted. You cause your mercy to flow like living water. Your benevolence stretches to the ends of the earth. We come in praise of all your goodness and lift our voices with thanks for your care. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 106. We'll be reading verses 1 and 2 and then verses 12 to 19. Psalm 106 beginning with the first verse. Would you join me as it is printed on the screen before you? I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Amen. Our act of praise this morning is number 139. The words are on the screen before you. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. You may remain seated as we sing.
now the word of God as it comes to us from Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to start with verse 35 and read through uh, the 8th verse of chapter 10. Matthew in the ninth chapter beginning with verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus. And Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word.
That is not easy. And they did a great job. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <coughs> Almighty God, fill us with a powerful light that shines with love into all the world. May we become even more committed to living Christ-like lives today and every day. We pray this in the name of our risen Lord and friend and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A man was driving home when he saw a group of children at a stand. Now, we don't see these all that much today. When I was a kid, we had them all the time. I had a few myself. They would always have a hand-scribbled sign on a table that said Kool-Aid for sale. Ten cents. Well, the man was thirsty, and so he pulled to the curb. And a boy came to the window and asked if he would like strawberry or grape Kool-Aid. The man placed his order and handed the boy a quarter. After a little bit of arguing, the children figured out that they owed their customer some change, and they rifled around in the, in the cigar box and got the correct amount and filled the cup, brought it to the car, and gave the man his Kool-Aid and his change. Curiously, the, the little boy stood there by the car looking at the man, and, and soon he asked, are you done yet? The young man replied, just about, why? The boy answered by pointing, saying, that's the only cup we have, and, and we need it to stay in business. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's difficult to operate a Kool-Aid business if you only have one cup. Sadly, sometimes we make the mistake in church of trying to work with one cup. You see, we are called to be a blessing to all people. Indeed, we are sent to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone. We have been given a great gift. We have been given the truth that Jesus is the one who will never let us down who will always love us and who will be with us forever. Yet that truth was never meant to be our truth alone. It was always intended to be shared. The question is, how? How do we commit, or excuse me, how do we communicate that good news? How do we share this life-changing truth? Some would say that the call to be a blessing to the world is a call to evangelize, and they are absolutely correct. Yet for many persons, that word evangelism means a one-cup kind of Kool-Aid stand. They believe that there are persons called to be evangelists, and that, that they are called to grab their tracks. If you remember... Tracks, if you're my age, you know what they are. They're little pamphlets that say, get saved. You know what I mean? I can remember as a child, my parents would take rides in the countryside of Panama, and we would gather together a case of tracks. And when we see anybody, we'd throw them out the window. Now, today we would get fined for littering. But then... It was interesting to watch people run to see what they were, and we pray that they would indeed read them. Yet, uh, you know, you, you grab your tracks together, and you take a podium and a loudspeaker, and then you go to the street corner and you shout, repent of your sins or you're going to go straight to hell. That's the kind of atmosphere that I grew up in. You smoke, well, you're going to go to hell. You drink, that was a bad one. Women, 
you wear jeans to church? <gasps> Let me tell you from experience, the receiving end of that kind of, evangel of evangelism is no place you want to be. While that method communicates the truth, it does so in a corrupt kind of way. It almost, if not actually, sounds as if the evangelist would say, you need to be just like me or you're going to hell. And it presents a picture of an angry, scary God that seems more intent on punishment than on life. And for a long time, I said, no thanks. For a long time, I ran away. Yet I would discover what I hope you discover is that this does not get us off the hook. While I do not agree with the methods that many employ in their evangelism, I must applaud their commitment. At least they're doing something. My friends, we are all called to evangelize, so I ask again, how? Well, let me tell you another little story. It was written many, many years ago. The title of this story is The Necklace. It tells of a young woman named Matilda who had dreamed, as many do, to be a part of that high society. The rich. The problem was, she was the wife of an ordinary Frenchman. And they didn't have the resources that it would take. However, one day Matilda's husband got an invitation to attend a fancy ball. Matilda was beside herself with joy, and, and so she borrowed a beautiful necklace from a wealthy friend and began to pretend that she was from that upper crust of society like she had always dreamed. At first, all went well. The stunning necklace drew many compliments from the aristocratic guest, and she just ate it up. But then the worst possible thing happened. Matilda lost the necklace. She was panic-stricken. She and her husband went and borrowed $8,500, and they bought a necklace that looked exactly like the one she had borrowed, and she returned it to her friend, telling her nothing of what had happened. For 10 agonizing years, they scrimped and saved to pay back that loan. They had to sell their house. They took on other jobs and they lived in a slum to raise the necessary funds. After it was finally paid, Matilda saw her friend one day and she confessed what they had done. She revealed the hardship they had endured in paying for the replacement and her friend gasped in horror. You see, the necklace was made out of paste. It wasn't real. It was worth less than $100. Doesn't that story simply break your heart? <clears throat> it makes me wonder, what opportunities did Matilda and her husband miss? by following this mistake. What could they have accomplished, not only for themselves and their family, but also for the world? Could they have done something that would have changed the world? We'll never know, simply because they followed the wrong path. I have to believe that the heart of Matilda's friend had been broken as well. If only Matilda had been honest with her in the first place, she could have told her, could have saved them all those years of heartache and misdirection. Yet Matilda, never, her friend, never knew. We can't claim that excuse. We know the world is going down the wrong path. We know that they are listening to the wrong message. We know that they are missing out in every step. I'm wondering, 
have our hearts been broken this morning? <clears throat> our passage from Matthew chapter 9 says this, When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus had compassion on the crowds. He alone understood the real tragedy of a life of empty values, a life with no direction, a life linked to false gods. We must pray that God would break our hearts, even as the heart of Jesus was and is broken this morning. We must pray that God would place within us a desire to introduce this hurting world to the real Father. A lot of us are going to go home and, and men especially, we're going to eat an awful lot of food. It's going to be way too much food. But fathers, we're just a type and shadow of the real thing. And the food that the world is hungering for is not fried chicken and cake or whatever you get. The, world, the food that the world is hungering for is the Word of God. Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We didn't read verses 9 and 10, but I think Eugene Peterson hits the mark, and I want to read them to you. Don't think that you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment. You are the equipment. Isn't that cool? Don't think that you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment. You know, I would have lost it had I been the man who stopped at the Kool-Aid stand with the one cup. I don't drink after Wanda if I can help it. Getting a little better in my old age. Still. Yeah. I think that I would not have only returned the cup, but I would have returned the Kool-Aid in not so appetizing a way when I found out that I was drinking after the entire community. Can't help but wonder what God is thinking about our efforts this morning. Are we trying to serve the world with just one cup? Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. He went about uh, curing every disease and every sickness. And he has called us to do the same. Now I know that there are some who would like to, to say that it's the pastor's job. And it is. I'm not saying it isn't. But hear me, friends. I don't know the people you're working with. I can't reach them like you can. I can't be with you when you're in the marketplace saying, wait a minute, don't get those peas, but instead let me tell you about Jesus. I'm not with your families. You are. We are the equipment, all of us. When the world is falling down around us, we have ears that can listen to the disenfranchised, to the frustrated, to the downtrodden. We have arms to embrace the beaten, arms to help clean up when windows are broken and buildings are burnt. We have hands that can offer a cup of water to the thirsty, hopefully with a clean cup. 
food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless, clothing to the naked. We have feet to take care of, uh, to, to take us to the lonely, to the sick, and to the imprisoned. Let us remember that Jesus said, when you do these things to the least of these, you do it to me. Lord, break our hearts, even as the heart of Jesus was broken. Empower us to follow in your footsteps. Amen and amen. You can tell I'm losing my voice. I'm going to blame it on the smoke. Probably not. So, I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to stay quiet. I'm going to invite you to uh, sing the song, Send a Light. It's not in our hymnal, but the words will be on the screen before you. affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. What are your joys and your concerns this morning? Prayers for David Evans. Thanksgiving for the rain this week. Don Barshinger for surgery on his foot. Praying for Brian, for strength, and I would add, even after the surgery. <laughs> Herb, Herb Garner. Mary Shove. How do you spell that? Got it. Mary Schoaf. Recovering from a fall. Let's spend some time in prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you that you deal with us in grace and mercy. Thank you that you do not turn your back on us even when we turn ours toward, away from you. Indeed, we have done that. We've not been the people that you want us to be and we are sorry. Forgive us our sins and remind us that as we confess our sins, you, ex you do exactly that. You forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for giving us the rain, for refreshing the land. Thank you for refreshing us even as we worship. We thank you that we can bring you to, the, uh, to you these persons. We pray for David and Dawn, Brian and Herb and Mary. We ask in the name of Jesus that you sow a blessing to their every need. Strengthen them, Lord God, and heal them. Quiet the anxieties that they must have and in all else be glorified in their life. Thank you, Lord God, for their witness among us. We pray for those around the world that we have not named, some we do not even know. But you, Lord God, are intimately aware of every need, and we pray that you would just reach out and suit a blessing. Thank you for hearing us even as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us worship through our tithes and offerings as the ushers come forward. <clears throat>
Would you stand and sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I for all that you do for us, for being the Father that you give us guidance, you just love us as for whatever we do, and we just take this little bit that we can give back to you and just hope that you can do with it as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Our sending hymn is number 389. Freely, freely. Let us sing together. The words are on the screen before you. Our benediction comes from Hebrews in the 13th chapter. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.